first question was about penicillin allergy and what other antibiotics are there available for a dog with a penicillin allergy and really the answer here is that there's there's lots of different groups of act uh, of antibiotics there's lots of different classes of antibiotics and each of them have a different what we call spectrum of activity and that means that they each target a, a specific type of bacteria bacteria with certain characteristics um, some are what we know as a narrow spectrum of activity meaning that they actually target a very limited number of bacteria now that doesn't mean that they're any weaker or stronger than the next antibiotic if it if the the bacteria is affected then it is affected um, and actually a narrow spectrum of activity is very good to use to help reduce our risk of resistance and superbugs, multi-drug resistant um, infections, which uh, I'm sure you'll all be aware of and are a, a threat to both our pet's health, but also to our health. And, and it's a developing, serious, serious developing problem. Um, with that in mind as well, we also have those uh, broad spectrum antibiotics, which uh, tackle a large number of different bacteria. Um, we also have antibiotics that penetrate different parts of the body. So some will work very well um, in bone infections, for example, and others won't be able to penetrate the bone. Um, infections in the brain or in the prostate, in the respiratory tract, different, back, uh, different antibiotics penetrate those areas better than others. So the, the bottom line is, is that thankfully penicillin allergy is nowhere near as common in our pets as it is in ourselves. Um, and so, yeah, it's not something that we really need to worry about. So it's not something that I've ever come across in, in my career. There is the potential to be allergic to anything that we give our pets, be that medication wise, topical, um, topical treatments, topical substances, uh, um, supplements, anything that we give has the potential to cause an allergy. Thankfully for our pets, um, penicillin allergies are, are relatively rare, but yes, there are definitely other options available if your pet doesn't ne indeed need antibiotics. And I say that because we are recognizing more and more that there are other ways that we're able to manage some of our more common infections. And we're also recognizing that some conditions which we thought in the past antibiotics were needed actually don't need antibiotics or they don't need um, oral antibiotics. They don't need tablets because we also recognize that there are issues with giving antibiotics now that because they although they are targeting specific bacteria um, and they're penetrating some parts of the body better than others they're not solely targeting the bacteria that are present and causing that infection they're targeting bacteria throughout the body um, the big place that, that has an effect is the gut but also of the skin the normal skin bacteria um, there's a normal healthy population of bacteria in the skin um, that helps keep everything nice and settled and and, and yeah it is really important for for good um, skin health um, equally many of you will have heard of the microbiome which is the the population of bacteria living within the gut um, and that is really critical for health and it is becoming more and more apparent just how important the the microbiome is and good gut health and all that all that kind of good stuff uh, which you'll have heard about in in some of the talks today and there's a fantastic chat about the microbiome um in tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's uh, lectures conversations if you like um but bacteria but giving antibiotics it, it causes problems with that and it causes long-term problems with that so it's not a case of once the antibiotics have have been stopped the the microbiome recovers instantly or the population of skin um skin micro, uh, microbes recovers instantly it takes months and months and if not longer years to, to to kind of get back to where it was there are ways that we can accelerate that but the bottom line is is if we can avoid the use of antibiotics then all the better that's not always possible clearly but um, in many in many cases it may be that the alternative is a little bit more work uh, but it's definitely work that is well worth um, well worth spending uh, again tomorrow we're talking all about the non-antibiotic um, treatment of bacterial skin infections so that's definitely something to consider um, and, and tune into and watch for all allergic dogs because we know that secondary bacterial infections is really really common uh, and is probably one of the most common complications and one of the most common reasons that treatment breaks down that we have a flare-up of, of allergy and itch um, or we fail to get on top of the problem in the first instance so so definitely check that out that's going to be with so i'm just looking at the schedule on my other screen with dr sharice roth um yeah tomorrow the non-antibiotic control of skin infection so 
yeah, hopefully that answers that question about penicillin allergies. Have you ever noticed your dog rubbing their nose on the carpet or the grass? Some dogs rub their noses simply because they enjoy the sensation. However, a dog rubbing their nose raw can indicate an underlying problem in some cases. In this video, Dr. Alex Avery will discuss the common causes of the behavior as well as prevention tips.